An interested viewer asks us this question. How can I avoid a negligent discharge? Well, got a pretty straightforward answer for you. Right after I let you know that we have a gun giveaway going on, it is happening right now. It's absolutely free and it ends really soon. So just click the link in the description down below to see which brand new gun you could win. Then watch all the way to the end of this video so you know how to never negligently discharge your firearm. So first and foremost, how you can never negligently discharge your firearm. It's gonna be a balancing act right here. Knowing the status of your firearm at all times and keeping your finger off the trigger until you've made a conscious decision to shoot. Now these are very important safety elements and they will actually help with your shooting, understanding things like this. So first of all, know the status of your firearm because you know what? All of these negligent discharge, it's always a surprise. Oh God, I didn't know it was loaded. Well, it's your gun. It's in your hand. You damn well better know if it's loaded or not. So know the status of your firearm at all times. If you pick up a firearm or you are handed a firearm, make sure that the muzzle is pointed in a safe direction and you do an immediate chamber check to see if there is any ammunition in that firearm. So the way to absolutely make sure an auto loading pistol is safe and will not fire, remove the magazine, lock the slide to the rear, visually and physically inspect the chamber to make sure that you know the gun is empty. Then you reload that firearm and you know the status specifically. You know exactly what you did to make that gun ready to fire. So understanding that status of your firearm, is it loaded or is it not loaded? What is the status? Is there rounds in the magazine but none in the chamber? What is the status? Where are the safety levers? Are they in position? Are the safeties turned off? What is the status of your firearm? You need to know that top to bottom, inside and out. Every time you touch a gun, you need to learn the status of that firearm and know what it is at all times when that gun is under your control. And if you transfer control of that gun, if you give that gun to somebody else, make sure that they know the status of the firearm. And I'm gonna tell you not to hand a loaded gun to someone else. Unload it, lock the slide to the rear, make it safe before you transfer possession of that gun to someone else because anything can happen. And now again, somebody's gotta manipulate the firearm to check the status. And that's when a lot of negligent discharges happen is during administrative handling. Very rarely do people accidentally fire a gun when they're in a fight. They're, they're intentionally firing that gun. They know what they're doing. They want to stop the threat. So they're not accidentally firing that or negligently firing that gun. Negligent discharge typically happens during what we will call administrative handling. So now the next step to this is keeping your finger off the trigger until you've made a conscious decision to shoot. I will harp on this. I will say it until I go to my grave. Guns don't go off. Guns are made to fire. Yes, I'm a magazine editor. Words mean a lot to me, but those words are very important and very specific. The gun just didn't simply go off. I don't know what happened, man. It just went off. It was just sitting there on the table. Nobody touched it and it just went off. Nope, I'm not buying it. Guns are made to fire especially these modern polymer frame striker fired pistols. Typically, those guns are not even in a fully cocked position until you pull the, the trigger all the way to the rear. There are a few that fire from the single action position. The striker is cocked, but a lot of them now are using that safe action. Glock calls it the safe action. Car calls it something else that uh, the gun isn't in a firing mode until you pull the trigger all the way to the rear. So understand that the gun is not going to go off. The gun is going to be made to fire. And that happens when you disengage all of the safety levers and safety operations and put your finger on the trigger and pull it all the way to the rear. That's when a gun is made to fire. So 
Unless you do that, and there's some very big cases currently in the news about this, unless you pull that trigger, a properly maintained, properly functioning modern firearm is not going to fire unless you make it fire. That means you are pulling the trigger. Even on a lot of these new revolvers, you know what? I can't think of one revolver that doesn't have a transfer bar safety system in there somehow. So if you're pulling the hammer back and it slips and falls forward, it's not going to fire the round that's underneath the firing pin unless the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear. That puts the transfer bar up, that allows the hammer to hit the firing pin, allows the firing pin to hit the primer. So many things have to happen in order for a gun to fire that Honestly, there's no accidental discharge. It's a negligent discharge. You just weren't paying attention to what you were doing. Pay attention, keep your finger off the trigger until you've made a conscious decision to fire, and make sure you know the status of that firearm at all times, when that firearm is under your control, and when you transfer control of that firearm to someone else. Knowing those two things, finger off the trigger, knowing the status, will make sure there's no negligent discharge. Want to know the three biggest mistakes when carrying a handgun? Then click on the video next to me to reveal all three mistakes. Mistake number two may shock you. Everybody has their own cardinal rules for what they're gonna do when they're carrying a gun, but right now I'm gonna give you three things that you must never do 